Hi guys, how are you doing? Doing hey, great. Hey. We, we always talk over each other on those. I know. <laughs> <laughs> It's the bond. It works on and off <laughs> screen. Love it. <laughs> um, so just just starting off, congratulations for this coming to theaters, which is exciting. I know a lot of fans are really excited to dive deeper into their backstories. Um, what are you guys most excited for fans to see about this movie? Um, I, I think that fans are going to love a lot of the visuals that are in this film, the, the, the ways that they've reanimated certain scenes and the way that they showcase certain inner like workings of the characters. Um, as well as just recontextualizing like previous moments from the series as well. Yeah, the character arcs, the depth, the emotions, all new material. This isn't a recap. This is a whole new POV plus more. Um, I think they're going to come out not realizing or not realizing that they had walked into a complete own experience separate of the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you um, what do you hope audiences take away from the movie? Uh, not only just a desire to check out the season that came out before, but it, like getting hyped for season two that's coming up soon as well. Um, in terms of like the messaging of the film, I feel like it also has a lot to say about finding the things that you love about what you do, whether it's yeah. whether it's soccer or any other sport or even just like a creative focus or or passion. Uh, just finding within yourself that drive to to do better for not anybody else but yourself. Because uh, I feel like. Not not to make it sound like oh you have to be selfish, but it's it's if if you're passionate about something, you need to have something for yourself that you love about it that makes you that drives you to get better at it. Yeah, I haven't I haven't felt that since Dragon Ball Z when watching anime. Maybe I need to watch more anime, but this show definitely. Um, I want them to take away the same feeling I had where I'm like I need to bust my butt to chase my dreams. I need to put the the work and the time in the effort every day to do something towards what I want to do on this planet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So pulling from that just a little more, what's your guys' favorite aspect of the Blue Lock um, universe or just even the story? Because I know just touching on what you guys just said, so there a lot of that's incorporated throughout the story. So mm -hmm. I'd say that um, it's um, cutthroat. It's dog eat dog. It's it's most of the time you walk into these these sports um, shows and it's about you know friend friendship and friends to the end. And this world is a little bit a little bit darker than that. It's a little more. We can't all be Muhammad Ali, Kobe Bryant, Lionel Messi. There can only be one. And so um, what's that going to do to your relationships? What's that going to do to your um, um, friendships as well? So I love that they explore that aspect. Mm -hmm. And and I do love one of the things that I love about Blue Lock and shows like it is that all of the characters in the show feel so fleshed out so that like you can't help as a fan finding your favorite character and reasonably rooting for them throughout the entire series or throughout the movie because like you never know who's going to be the one that like continues on or who's going to be like cut off early or something like that. Like it, it feels like anybody could be the main character of this series. Um, and I, I feel like they do a really good job of making you uh as a fan like attached to somebody uh whether that be the main character isagi or nagi or deo or or any one of the other members of the ensemble oh absolutely with the attachment i was just talking to my friend about the other night it's like it's kind of like game of thrones where you get attached and you're like no they're gone where are they off what, what's going on i want them to come back uh, <laughs> hopefully no red weddings um <laughs> what do you think what do you think about the aspect of nagi and rio's um on-screen bond that's so like what aspect of it do you think is so captivating to fans like what do you think resonates with them the most um i think it's just like an opposites attract type of thing as well like they they love to see that dynamic of one person trying to pull the best out of the other person who is just kind of like there but like also see something in his friend like i feel like uh reo very much is like oh man i see something in him i can fix him i'll i'll bring that out of him like he he has so much potential that he just doesn't see in himself and i feel like nagi Nagi gets out of that friendship that kind of like curiosity about like why does this guy care so much like and he can finally like have a little bit more of an insight as to to why people in general ch tend to like follow their dreams and try their hardest to to do what they want um and so I feel like just that that dynamic really resonates with a lot of fans of this this genre of anime definitely definitely that um and, and kind of in contrast to what we we're just talking about in this dog eat dog world you have this wholesome kind of bond that has formed of, of two friends that found each other, these opposites attract and that they're um, as wholesome as it is. And they learn the rules. They're like, well, they're the rebels. They're the rebels and all this, as much as everyone's so much more intense and cool and cutthroat. They're saying, no, we know the rules, but 
we're going to do it our way. We're going to try to find a way. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We're going to do it our way. We're going to do it our way. So I love that. Um, they kind of try to buck the system with their, uh, with their, with their friendship. <laughs> mm-hmm. Were there any scenes or lines from this movie in particular that you guys found challenging or rewarding to record or that you're just excited to, to do? Yes. Uh, with, without spoiling too much, there's a few moments near the end of the, near the end of the film, uh, during a, during one of the game matches. And then also during just some of the, uh, the the talking in between matches uh where like there were some acting choices i made where i was just kind of like wow i was really proud of that thanks to like help with uh the direction of jonathan rigg who who worked on us with this film um there were just like moments where we were watching back what we just did and i was like wow this is like why i want to be an actor like working on this kind of stuff is like why i became an actor in the first place um, and then there's also just like some fun humorous stuff like early on in the show there's like an uh, there's a line that I don't want to specify but like there it, it's it's really early on where uh where Nagi and Reo have just finished like practicing and stuff and they have like a funny interaction that I that I won't spoil here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I um exact same answer. I mean, of course any of the um, the emotional stuff that we got to get a hold of. Um I will add on and say um Reo getting a chance to to when he's having fun and just talking smack. Like I was so happy to be able to do more of that. Um, Cause some of that's in the show, but being able to have a movie uh, around these two characters, being able to show off his like fun, loving his, his cockiness um, when he's overly confident. I love getting to play in that range. And then um, I'd say um, the lines that we got to get back from the show, like things that we now have more context in from, from, from the first show being able to, yeah, just to take those lines again with having more depth and understanding of the characters. Yeah, what type of intensity do you guys have to pull from? Because some of those scenes get really intense from doing that as like actors. I know you guys are both really talented actors, but like, what what does that all entail? Because when you're watching, you're like, oh, this is really happening, and then you think about the process of creating the scene. And I'm like, how are they doing this? So, what type of intensity <laughs> do you guys have to pull from to do that? Yeah, it's it's especially with sports or like action shows in general. I, at least for me, whenever I'm tackling any scenes like that, I try to keep in mind like, well. They're not just sitting on their couch talking to somebody on a microphone at there or sitting at a desk or something like that. They're they're in the moment. They're they're actively running. They're constantly like doing something. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I always try to keep that level of like just that that little bit of breath. It doesn't even have to be overbearing, but just something that's just there and present that gives that life to to those moments that like you can tell that this person is in this world. It's not just some guy talking into a microphone in a booth. Um, and, and I try to keep that at the front of my mind when working on stuff like that to just try and try and give myself not only the right physicality for myself as a performer, but to also just make the world that that we're voicing in feel just that much more believable. Yeah. And I'd say we, we got the easiest job when it comes to because everything's already done for us as far as animation will show us how intense the character is. The Japanese, you know, trying to honor the Japanese uh, original voice actor, the intensity they brought to it. So that's a skeleton and baseline to work off of. And now it's up to you not to drop the ball and to match all that. <laughs> with the, the beautiful music that's in this movie. Oh, my gosh. When it's the when they're competing or the emotional moments. Oh, my. You, you have to do it justice or you just or go home. Like as an actor, you got to bring it. You have to bring it when everyone else is done a 10 out of 10 bang up job like you, you got to bring it <laughs> mm. so in in blue lock a lot of times the characters well it's overarching theme or like philosophy of ego especially who's running it um that cur- characters are highly encouraged to embrace their egos or kind of tap into it you know and it's often a motivating force for the characters what do you guys find motivates you as actors just to continue to pursue your passion secure roles and go after your dreams and stuff like that um, honestly, this the the process of working on this movie, having just followed up working on the Q movie, it's really reinvigorated my love for being a performer. Um, like I said, there were moments in this movie where I was like, this is like why I wanted to be an actor to begin with is working on stuff like this. And I feel like um, being able to work on two movies, playing the main character back to back, like has been really fulfilling and, and reinvigorating, but also even outside of just like having once in a lifetime moments like that, just seeing friends of mine and colleagues in this industry thriving in different fields like video games and anime and and even on camera stuff here and there like just seeing the successes of my friends really makes me see what they're doing and not so much compare myself to them but more like oh yeah I, they they did really good for themselves i want to be able to do good for myself as well and and be able to, to kind of keep keep uh 
keep pace with some of my colleagues as well, if that makes sense. While at the same time, not trying to let that like comparison, like pull me down and be like, oh man, I'm not doing nearly as good as my friends or something. I try to approach it from more of the like, wow, they made it happen. I, I'm going to try to make it happen too. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I mean, he, he nailed it. I mean, it's um, having a similar, I mean, just like the show, if you're bringing kind of an athletic mindset to your career, it's like, okay, you guys are going to go party. I'm working on my craft. Oh, you guys staying up late watching Netflix, binge watching shows. I'm going to work on my craft. Of course, take mental health days. And of course you need rest to recover, to be better. But how often are you putting in the time as an actor to try to get where you want to be? And then like Bryson said, looking at other people as a blueprint, almost like I was like Lord of the Rings. When they pick up the ring, if you hold on to it too long, it'll corrupt the person. But you know, sometimes you got to pick it up for a second and go, okay, um, playing the comparison game. Like people that I, I look at, um, Oscar, Oscar, um, I don't know how to say his last name correctly. I don't know, Song, and maybe Rico Farhardo. I'm like, these guys are able to do anime. They're doing commercials. They're on TV film. Yeah, that's such a good blueprint of guys that are older than me that are, I, I want to live that kind of lifestyle. I want to be able to pursue um, those type of goals as well. And to be able to achieve that now has been freaking amazing. It's a great feeling. It, it definitely, those days paid off where it's like, I'm going to stay home and work on my thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the characters in Blue Lock constantly navigate, you know, almost you have to do a delicate balance between like pursuing your ego, which we touched on a little bit, like embracing that and getting your dreams there, but also teamwork as well. How do you think that balance like is kind of, it kind of parallels your world as actors? Um, I think, I think that in the acting world, there's, there's the types that see the whole thing as a big competition where you're up against everybody else. Everybody else is like up for the same role. They're my competition. Um, and I'm, I'm very much not a competitive person myself. And so this show, uh, kind of, kind of is at odds with my own personal philosophies about acting and, and my life in general. And it's not that I disagree with it or anything like that. It's just that like, I come into things like auditions with, I'm going to try my best. And if I don't get selected for it, it's no, it's no, it's nothing against me. It's not that like the, the director or the casting director has anything against me for this role. It's just more that like, well, they, they found something in somebody else's performance that they really liked. And so they said, well, we're going to go with this guy for this character. Um, and so that's kind of been how I tend to approach a lot of my acting, but there are definitely moments where like, you'll be up for a character and like, you get really far, or maybe you do a couple of callbacks and you feel like, yes, I really got this. And then it would fall through for one reason or not or another. And just that frustration that you can feel like you can always have that objective in the back of your mind of like, well, I mean, that's just the business. It's the numbers. And like, maybe there was just something that other actor did that I, that wasn't in part of my voice, but like there, it still doesn't, uh, it still doesn't help to 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 quell that frustration of like, man, I, I just really could have I feel like I could have done better and I feel like I could have really got that role or something. So as as uh, as as egocentric as it can get, like it showcases in the show, like the uh, following your ego uh, as as easy as it can be to fall into that. I, I feel like it's it's about finding a healthy balance. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm, I'm, I'm the, I'm the actor that he said that, that that's way too intense. <laughs> For me, it's, um, I got a martial arts background and if you respect me, you're going to try to take my head off when we fight. And if I respect you, I'm going to try to take your head off, but then we're going to be friends after. And so trying to find that in the acting world where going into an audition, I'm going to, I'm here to do battle and give my absolute best. But yes, like Bryson said, I do want to, once it's done, step out of the room and do my best to not think about it, not stress about it whoever they chose is, is beyond me, but I know I did my best job, or at least I hope I, I, I know that I, I did the work and tried to memorize my lines. If that's part of the process, whatever it is as an actor, but um, I could be better on the teamwork aspect and networking. I'm a bit of an introvert, so I should be going to more gatherings, hangouts and I'm just being way, came. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm terrible at that part, but um, I like my house. I'm, I'm Nagi in that respect where I'm like, Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm home. Like, it's my dog. <laughs> I'm very much a homebody. I got all my video games. I got all my TV. My house. My house is like, it's like. And you work hard for it. I have so much stuff that I can do at home. That like, why yes. would I? Why would I want to go sanctuary. out and do other stuff? <laughs> <laughs> if your home is a sanctuary, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, um, if you guys had to pick your own soccer team and create your own soccer team, but the characters on the show, who would you guys pick? Hmm. I don't know how this would balance team wise in terms of like real soccer, but I would love to see a team with like Nagi, Chigiri, uh, Isagi, Rayo, Rin. I don't know how many team members are on a soccer team. Is it like 10 or 15 or something? 
Um, Botto would be really cool on that team. Just a lot of the the highlighted characters that I really like in the show. So I, I think that's probably a good smattering of characters I'd like to see on the same team. I've been playing the, um, the, the, the Blue Lock cell phone game. And so I think they give you like five and you got to build a team. I, I feel like Rayo is such a good distributor. So I put a whole bunch of scores around him. I'm taking Rayo as, 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 um, as, as the lead. And then Reen, uh, Nagi, um, Botto has got a hell of a shot. And then um, as far as people that we know, um, I'm, I'm taking uh, Kunigami. He's got a hell of a Kunigami. shot. Kunigami is a great <laughs> Kunigami. <choice. laughs> great. Thank you guys so much. And congratulations on your success. And awesome speaking to you again, Bryson. And congratulations on movies back to back. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank I you, agree. guys.